Hello everyone. This simple DC motor that you have just made is a fascinating toy. Some of you would have made similar models before and for the rest this would have been the first time. Here we will delve a little bit further to see what specifics we can learn pertinent to your curriculum as well as make real life connections and narrate some stories and anecdotes that might make the entire experience of making, playing with and experimenting with this toy more enjoyable and meaningful. Apart from the insulated, which is the enamel coated copper coil and the ferrite ring magnets required to undertake this activity, all the other items are usually easily available in the household. Even these two items are available at a very low cost in the market, but slightly harder to acquire as you need to know where to get them. Hence, we provide you with a little bit extra of these materials so that you are able to experiment further. We hope you have taken some time to play the games we have created, recording your observation and trying different scenarios at balancing the power of different motors. After having completed this activity, either in your classroom with the instruction from a facilitator or at home having consulted our learning material, the first thing you should do is try some variations of this model. For example, use a bigger battery. Use more or less magnets. Place them at different distances from the coil. Use external magnets to slow down or speed up the coil. Reduce or increase the number of turns on the coil. Use a different gauge of copper coil. Use uninsulated wire. Use stronger magnets like, like neodymium magnets. Try with batteries of different voltages. We'd be happy to hear from you if you come up with a variation of your own and would like to share it with us. Our making guide has a few sample observation questions and it would be very meaningful for you if you can answer and address some of these. Unknowingly, your scientific learning of this model and topic has already come a long way. In the specific way you had to assemble this model, for example the scraping of the leads, and from the various results you would have experienced by the different variations, you already start getting an idea about the principles and physics behind how this motor works and what it depends on. Measurements lie at the core of any scientific inquiry, and we encourage you to make as many as possible in a simple way. How many turns does your coil have? How many magnets have you used? What's the distance between the coil and the magnets? What's the voltage of your battery? How much does the coil weigh? V various ways in which you can go much deeper into experimenting and calculating things about this activity as well as making measurements. These will start giving you a clue as to the variables on which the speed of the coil depends. Is it the number of turns or the strength of the magnet? or the distance between coil and magnet, or is it all of them, a combination of some of them, both at a qualitative level and as you make more accurate measurements at a quantitative level, you will be able to figure out the various factors on which the speed of the coil, which is in essence the strength and efficacy of the motor, depends. This activity is one of our star performers. It is simple to make and execute and one derives great amounts of joy when the one you make works. It also shows the functioning of a motor splendidly and is an excellent experiment to demonstrate Ørsted's law of electromagnetism, discovered by the Danish scientist in 1820. Note that Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction is just the inverse of this process and was postulated by the English scientist soon after Ørsted's discovery in 1821. Faraday was also the first person to build a motor called a homopolar motor in the same year. The simple DC motor we have made is also a great example to show the conversion of energy from one form to another, in this case electrical to mechanical. Faraday's law explains how electricity is generated when there is a change in the magnetic flux. Its inverse is also true that using electricity that is the motion of any charged particle, a magnetic field is also created. Hence, current flowing through any conductor automatically converts that piece of metal into a magnet. 
this is what is demonstrated in a motor. As electricity flows through the copper coil, a magnetic field is created around the coil, thereby making the coil an electromagnet. It is crucial to note that this work done 200 years ago has been one of the most influential events to have occurred in modern human history. Oersted and Faraday's work, combined with the later formalization by the Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell of the properties and equations of magnets, magnetism and electromagnetism, paved the way for modern society and the industrial age. The world would have been a very different place without the work of these gentlemen. In the motor you have just made, the copper coil electromagnet now interacts with the ferrite magnet you have placed on the battery and this produces the rotation of the coil. However, as the coil rotates, the direction of the magnetic field of the coil would also flip as the current keeps flowing through the coil. It is to prevent this that we scrape only half to three quarters of the circumference of one of the loose ends. This ensures that current is flowing through the coil for only half the rotation, during which time the ferrite magnet repels the electromagnet in a particular direction, thereby giving a single thrust in the same direction on each rotation. This ensures that the coil rotates. The momentum the coil generates is sufficient to power it for half the rotation during which no electricity flows through the coil. There are various scientific terms that you need to familiarize yourself with as you go through this activity. The first is uh, the magnetic field. It's also known as flux density or magnetic flux density. This refers to the imaginary field lines that connect the north and south pole of a magnet flowing from north to south and are strongest near the poles. Electric current this is created by the flow of charged particles in a conductor. As a convention, the direction is determined by the flow of positively charged particles, that is from the positive terminal to the negative. As discussed earlier, Oersted's law is nothing but an electric current creates a magnetic field. Faraday's law, this law states that the rate of change of flux density is directly proportional to the electromotive force that is the electric potential or voltage created in a circuit that is experiencing this change of flux. An electromagnet is again following on from Oersted's law, a current carrying conductor becomes a magnet or an electromagnet. Some theory prerequisites that we hope that you already have some idea of before having started this activity, uh, for terms like what a battery is, what a magnet is, uh, what current is, force, speed, rotation, conductor, all these are terms you would have read in your textbook, but it's good to recap a little bit about them before you delve deeper into understanding how this particular model works. Some simple algebraic and math skills are required to conduct the measurements and the experiments that I've talked about earlier, uh, mainly just arithmetic and some simple algebra. And we hope that by conducting this experiment, you have uh, honed some simple hand skills, like how to wind a coil around a battery using simple sticking tape to stick the safety pins, for example, using cutters or scissors to scrape the insulation. These will ho all help you in improving your hand skills and conducting further experiments with more diligence and care. There are some concepts that are crucial to the functioning of this model. First is, what is the direction of the magnetic field produced in this coil? So the direction of the magnetic field produced by an electromagnet is determined by the direction of the current. The corkscrew rule can be used to determine the direction. That is, if your right hand thumb is in the direction of the current, then your wrapped fingers signify the direction of the magnetic field. So this is a very simple way to figure out the direction of either the current uh, uh, created by a magnetic field or the direction of a magnetic field created by a current carrying conductor. The force experienced by a current carrying wire is nothing but the length of the wire, which we denote by the capital letter L, multiplied by the current in the wire, denoted by the capital letter I, multiplied by the 
strength of the magnetic field denoted by the capital letter B. L is the length of the wire that is perpendicular to B, more the number of loops, more this length. I is determined by the strength of the battery and the resistance in the wire. And B is determined by the strength of the magnet and the distance between the magnet and the coil. Hence, to increase the speed of the coil, we need to increase the force the coil experiences and one can do that by varying any or all of the above variables. More loops in the coil will create more force. A stronger battery will increase I and hence increase the force and the speed. A wire with less resistance will also help. This can be done either by changing the metal of the wire is made out of to one that is of lower resistance or increasing the gauge of the wire using more magnets or stronger magnets as well as keeping them as close to the loop will both help in increasing the speed of the coil. The direction the coil rotates depends on the direction of the current in the wire and the direction of the magnetic field. This can be altered by switching the leads of the coil such that the one that was in the positive terminal safety pin is in the negative terminal safety pin and vice versa or we can change the direction by flipping the magnet that's placed on the battery. It is these fine nuances of this simple toy that make it so amazing. All electric motors in the world work on the same principle. Electricity flowing through a metal coil converts it to an electromagnet, which in turn interacts with a permanent magnet or another electromagnet, and this produces the thrust in a tangential direction that results in rotation. All our electrical gadgets that have motors like fans and hair dryers, etc. use this principle but they use alternating current that is AC which comes in our main supply at home. DC motors however also exist in the industry but aren't as prevalent. Some electric railway locomotives in certain parts of the world for example till recently in Mumbai continued to use direct current to power their massive motors. We hope that you have enjoyed making, playing with and experimenting with the DC motor and now have a clearer picture of how it works, what principles lie at its core, what its speed depends on and also appreciate the historical and scientific significance of such a model based on what you see around you today in your daily life, which we often take for granted. Thank you. Mm -hmm.